Hey, I'm Nate Faustin. I'm a professional archaeologist currently excavating in northern Texas, and I specialize in the archaeology of North America prior to its colonization by Europeans. This has been my primary field of study and work for over 10 years, especially in the region that we call the Eastern Woodlands. So in a previous video, I talked about the prehistoric copper forging industry of the Great Lakes region, especially around Lake Superior, where pure elemental copper, also called native copper, is abundant. If you haven't seen that video yet, I will leave a link in the description for this video so you can get caught up. In this video, I want to talk about how these very early inhabitants of the region were mining the copper in the first place. In the absence of written records, we have to get a bit creative. The most obvious and likely method that they could have used is still available to us today. That's wherever bodies of moving water cross cut bedded copper, it will erode out the bedrock and leave copper materials in, in that water source. So you can pan for it essentially, or just go through and pick it out. But that's not the only method that was used to recover copper. And there are mines that have been excavated away from waterways and somehow the people in the region knew to dig there in the first place. So in order to understand the prehistoric prospecting techniques, we have to depend on what's called the uniformitarian principle. And that basically means that an object or a substance behaves fundamentally the same wherever and whenever it exists. So copper 6,000 years ago behaves basically the same way as copper now, and copper in the Americas will behave fundamentally the same as it behaves in Europe or Asia. It's all the same basic substance, so it all has the same requirements for making tools, and it also affects its environment in similar ways when it is folded into the local geology. It'll produce similar signals on the surface that an expert prospector will be able to interpret to find copper deposits below. So the Uniformitarian Principle makes a book called De Re Metallica by Georges Agricola very useful to archaeologists trying to explain how Americans knew where to dig to find embedded copper. This book was published in 1556 by a North German naturalist who compiled the folk knowledge about mining and prospecting techniques used in his region, and many of the methods he describes would have been just as effective in the Great Lakes as they were in Europe. So, for example, Agricola says, We search for the veins by observing the hoarfrosts, which whiten all herbage except that growing over the veins, because the veins emit a warm and dry exhalation which hinders the freezing of the moisture, for which reason such plants appear wet rather than whitened by the frost. This may be observed in all cold places before the grass has grown to its full size. So the methods involve using surface vegetation in other ways. So for instance, trees might grow shorter all in a, in a cluster or in a row, or different mosses and fungi might be present or absent in conspicuous ways where copper is to be found. Once a vein was identified, excavation of the copper was accomplished with a wide variety of stone hammers to crush and fracture the bedrock. This then could be um, added to with wedges of wood or stone to shear off more of that bedrock, and also wooden paddle-shaped digging implements were used for uh, removing material. Now, because these people were not melting down the copper that they were mining, and casting it, the most efficient way to make an object with the copper that was being mined was to start with a piece that was already very similar in shape to what the end product was intended to be. So for example, thin sheet copper, which occurs, occurs naturally, might be sourced specifically for the making of beads or other very thin objects, whereas you could use small pebble-sized pieces of copper to, as your base to hammer out into rods and then sharpen those into copper awls or then bend those uh, copper rods into fish hooks. So I hope you found that interesting. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and thank you for watching.